Hello friends, welcome to the third lecture in adrenals. So today we are going to discuss about congenital adrenal hyperplasia. My name is Dr. Sandosh Abraham. I'm a specialist registrar in diabetes and endocrinology at Scarborough General Hospital. So let's start. So congenital adrenal hyperplasia is due to one of the deficiency of one of the enzymes necessary for cortisol biosynthesis. More than 90% is due to the deficiency of 21 alpha hydroxylase. It's got a wide clinical spectrum. It can start from, it can range from neonatal uh, salt wasting, virilization. It can start from the neonatal period uh, and can range from salt wasting, virilization to non classic uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. It is autosomally recessive, the inheritance, and the presentation depends upon the severity of mutation. To wrap up, it is due to deficiency of one of the enzymes for cortisol biosynthesis. More than 90% have 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency, autosomal recessive mode of inheritance. Presentation uh, depends on the severity of mutation. Genetics. The most common gene implicated is CYP21, which codes for 21 alpha hydroxylase. CYP21 pseudo gene lies very close to this CYP21 gene and it has caught 90% homology but no functional activity. When sequences from the pseudo gene are transferred into this active gene, it makes the active gene inactive. So it is called a gene conversion. Alternatively, you can have gene mutation or gene deletion. In the non-classic form, a point mutation, a single base change occurs. In simple virilization, virilizing form, there are missense mutations, and in solved variety or severe virilization, a gene conversion or partial deletion may be the cause. To sum up, the in the classic form, it could be due to mutation, gene deletion, or gene conversion where the pseudo gene is transferred to the active gene. In the not classic form, it could be due to a point mutation. In the simple virilizing form, it could be due to a missense mutation. In the salt wasting or severe virilization form, it could be due to gene conversion or partial deletion. 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency leads to reduced aldosterone and cortisol. So there is a loss of negative feedback and hence ACTH secretion increases. It leads to hydrocortical hyperplasia, which results in the accumulation of steroid precursors, especially progesterone and 17 hydroxyprogesterone, and they are shunted to androgen synthesis, which results in increased testosterone and androstenedione. This is the mechanism by which you have increased androgens in 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. I use a simple mnemonic for the different enzyme deficiencies for uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia to remember them. If it is with the 21 alpha hydroxylase, basically I write 21, 17 and 11. So if you write the 1 and 1 like this, if the 1 is for an upward arrow, you just put an upward arrow in both of these and you put A and T on the top. You put uh, you write 21, 17 and 11. So one, it will be always an upward arrow and for all other digits it will be a normal sign. So if you put A and D and then if you make a column like this, for the 11, both are upward arrows. That means both A and T are up. So A here means aldosterone and T means testosterone. So this 11, 11, uh, so the 11 hydroxylase deficiency will have both of these enzymes, uh, bo both of these conditions. That is, it, the phenotype will exhibit increased blood pressure as well as it will exhibit precocious puberty or virilization. Whereas in the 17, there is only one upward arrow that is for the A so it will exhibit increased aldosterone hence hypertension will be a prominent feature but 
there won't be any precocious puberty or any ambiguous genitalia because it's normal over here so there won't be any hyperandrogenism whereas in the 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency you have uh, normal aldosterone that is a blood pressure will be normal but, but the testosterone will be increased so if you have a case where you have only the testosterone elevated it will be mostly 21 alpha if you have only the blood pressure elevated it will be 17 type and it will be with the 11 uh, enzyme deficiency that you will have both of these so these uh, present with hypertension as well as features of hy hyperandrogenism so you have 21 alpha hydroxylase 11 beta hydroxylase and 17 alpha hydroxylase uh, as most important ones so as I've told you 21 alpha hydroxylase will have ambiguous genitalia in females and precocious pibaki in males cause uh, there is increased testosterone and the blood pressure is normal whereas in 11 beta hydro whereas in 17 alpha hydroxylase they will have hypertension but the testosterone is okay androgens are fine so in fact they have a delayed puberty in females and pseudohermaphroditism hermaphroditism in males so even uh, even there could be less sex steroids in those conditions and what about 21 alpha uh, 11 beta hydroxylase both of them will be increased so ambiguous genitalia virilization and hypertension so this is how you remember and the rest of that partial deficiency you will have you will not have uh, very strict features of the 21 alpha hydroxylase and 3 beta hydroxylase is very rare clinical presentation of classic Congenital hy hy uh, adrenal hyperplasia, usually diagnosed in infancy. In adults, there will be sexual dysfunction and subfertility in females, particularly in salt wasters. They have attempted reconstructive genital surgery in majority of the females to provide an uh, adequate uh, vaginal and introitus, and they have achieved normal pregnancy rates, almost 90%. In males, increased adrenal androgens lead to suppression of gonadotrophins and decreased testicular function. So that could be the reason why they have gonadal dysfunction and sexual dysfunction and loss of libido in males. Another problem with increased ACTH is the TART, that is a testicular adrenal rest tissue, which is usually benign, but it could destroy the testis. So it is usually misdiagnosed as testicular tumors. So once you have this TART, you should have an ultrasound every two years to evaluate whether the tarts are growing or not so uh, what about spermatogenesis it is slow in poorly controlled congenital uh, adrenal hyperplasia because of the suppression of the gonadotrophins there is a significant risk of adrenaline crisis in these uh, patients and the quality of life is also impaired how about non-classical congenital adrenal hyperplasia so here the glucocorticoids and the aldosterone are normal but there is overproduction of 17 hydroxyprogesterone so the androgens are raised so in females they present with hirsutism acne and oligomenorrhea just like the PCOS and can have subfertility the P P even the polycystic ovaries are common here so it could be a differential with the non-classic CH it is also associated with adrenal insulin lomas and hyperplasia Asym in females, asymptomatic in males and the effect of fertility in males is unknown. So how do you diagnose non-classic congenital adrenal hyperplasia? So you measure 17 hydroxyprogesterone. If it is less than 5, you measure it in the follicular phase because it will produce a false positive in the luteal phase. So if it is less than 5, it is normal. If it is more than 5, it is congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So it's a classic CH. But if it is bef five to uh, between 5 to 15, you can suspect that there is a non-classical congenital hyperplasia. So you do you proceed to ACTH stimulation test. So in the non-classical type, you have an exaggerated rise in 17 hydroxyprogesterone. So if you do the ACTH stimulation, if it is less than 30, it excludes the diagnosis. But if it has got an exaggerated rise, it is a non-classical form. And 30 to 45 
can suggest either heterozygosity or non-classical congenital adrenal hyperplasia and the cortical response to ACTH is low other investigations will involve androgens in males with poorly controlled classical congenital hyperplasia uh, it, the testosterone and androstenedione levels may be in the adult range because of the adrenal production in non classical uh, CH the circulating testosterone and particularly androstenedione will be more will be elevated renin levels are elevated because of the androstenedione deficiency and ACTH will be greatly elevated in poorly controlled classic CH and usually normal uh, levels in non classic CH so that is the distinction between these two so it will be elevated in classic CH and it will be normal in non classic CH why is it elevated if you go back if you go back to the you, you can find that there is the loss of negative feedback because of the deficiency of aldosterone and cortisol so that is why the ACTH is elevated in the classic form whereas in the partial form you have some aldosterone and cortisol so the ACTH is not suppressed there so so the ACTH is not hypersecreted there so it is not produced more but in the classic form since you have a complete deficiency of aldosterone and cortisol the ACTH is hypersecreted so you treat the classic congenital hyperplasia with prednisolone that's a drug of choice so it's given in two divided doses with one third of the dose given on waking and two third of the dose on retiring because you need to suppress the ACTH so you want to uh, uh, so that you, you are going to suppress the ACTH so uh, ACTH will peak up during the late hours to early morning so that you can ref uh, find that in the uh, cortisol curves also so to mimic that you give that it's just opposite to what you give in adrenal insufficiency where you give uh, higher dose in the morning and lower dose in the evening so eat uh, the prednisolone you give here to suppress ACTH if it doesn't work you can give the dexamethasone and during illness there should be the stress dosing so the do doses are usually doubled if you have the lo sword losing form of uh, congenital antrenal hyperplasia they will need fluorocortisone once daily for intractable infertility bilateral adrenalectomy is suggested so if the patient is willing uh, is wishing to become pregnant they require prior CYP21 mutation analysis at the earliest opportunity to enable genetic counseling if the patient is a carrier there's a 50 percent of uh, the child becoming affected this is because the, because of the high prevalence of carriers of the 21 hydro, uh, alpha hydroxylase gene uh, mutations in the general population 1 in 63 is a carrier In the non-classic form, if you have menstrual abnormalities like oligamenorrhea, amenorrhea, you keep prednisolone to normalize the ovulatory function. So hirsutism and acne could be treated as in PCOS. Don't, do not use pyranolactone here. If plasma renin is elevated, it shows inadequate aldosterone, so you give her fluorocortisone in this case. Males may not require treatment. They might need occasional glucocorticoids. In pregnancy, screen the patient and the partner using basal ACTH simulated 17 hydroxy progesterone levels. If the levels are elevated, go for genotyping. If it is heterozygote, then pre implantation genetic diagnosis or prenatal tre treatment of the fetus may be considered. So, we give physiological prednisolone or hydrocortisone uh, dose. Uh, 
it 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 doesn't need any adjustments during pregnancy and you need to treat them symptomatically you can use fludrocortisone in hypotension the placental aromatase it will protect the fetus from maternal androgens so in uh, in mothers with CAH no case of fetal virilization is recorded and more than 75 percent are by CS because of the masculinized pelvis how about the prenatal treatment of pregnancies at risk for CAH the aim is to prevent virilization of the affected female fetus it's not the male fetus the female fetus so if the child if there is a previous child from the same partner with CAH or non mutations in both periods parents then it is to be considered for the prenatal treatment other it is not for mothers with established CAH unless the partner is a non carrier of a severe mut mutation it is to be considered by an experienced unit so dexamethasone is given in three divided doses the fact why dexamethasone is given is because it crosses the placenta it reduces the fetal adrenal hyperadrenalism as as soon as you find that the fetus is a male you can discontinue this treatment finally monitoring of the treatment it is by clinical assessment you measure the BP and weight any evidence of hyperandrogenism and glucocorticoid excess that's very very important here amenorrhea will indicate uh, inadequate therapy you need to look for the levels of testosterone and 17 hydroxyprogesterone and renin the aim is to put them on the moderately raised or high normal levels shouldn't suppress it completely because normalizing will often result in complications of supraphysiological dose of glucocorticoids that glucocorticoid toxicity could result in consider bone mineral density because you use a lot of steroids here testicular function if there is if the LH is low it means that the adrenal androgens are high and if the FSH is high it means that there could be adrenal rest and it could lead to testicular failure so routine ultrasound test every three to five years and consider sperm storage if adrenal rests are present ovaries of ultrasounds are not useful if you find testicular adrenal uh, rest tumors that is a TARDS it could uh, interfere with the fertility so if ever you find them you have to follow up them by ultrasound screening at every two years but if you don't find them the screening is for every three to five years thank you